Hey folks, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I was originally going to cover these steps in my first live modding workshop, but decided that it would be easier for everyone if downloaded installation time didn't bog down the streams. With that being said, our topics for today include installing Unity, creating our Mero SDK project, and installing some additional applications that we will be using in the future. Note that this process may change in the future, in which case I'll try to update this video in a timely manner. Uh, many of these steps are also covered on Stress Level Zero's official YouTube channel. I'll link the relevant videos below, uh, but I'll also supply some additional information. Alright, let's get started. First, we'll need to install the Unity Hub application so that we can manage Unity versions and project files. Simply go to unity.com, download, and then download for Windows. You can run the installer once ready. Now that the hub itself is installed, it's time to get the correct version of Unity. You can start by pasting this URL from the description into your web browser. It'll instruct the Unity Hub to find and install that exact version. Your browser will likely ask for permission first, so make sure to allow it to do so. During installation, you'll want to enable the following modules. Android Build Support with OpenJDK, as well as Android SDK and NDK tools. And lastly, Windows Build Support specifically the IL2CPP variation. Now, if this automated installation doesn't work for you, you can also follow the link in the description to manually install Unity. Otherwise, skip to this timestamp on the screen. For manual installation, you'll need the Windows installer, as well as the Windows components for Android build support and Windows build support. Once all three are downloaded, you can run the Unity installer, then the two component installers. Now take note of where you're installing Unity, as you'll need to locate it in the next step. Now that these are done installing, you can return to the Unity Hub, Installs, and press Locate. Navigate to the location you installed Unity, open the Editor folder within it, and select the Unity EXE. Now you can create your Mero SDK project. This project can be reused for every mod you create. We'll also incorporate the extended SDK in a future workshop giving us access to additional features that aren't officially supported yet. To get started, let's press New Project. Select the correct Unity version from the dropdown. Once again, that's 2021 3.16 F1. We're going to choose the 3D Core template. Give it whatever name you'd like. I like to call mine Marrow SDK, just for the sake of simplicity. It also likes to select uh, creating your project on the Unity Cloud by default. I assume that's what this is. I just click on it and I choose to uh, create it locally. And you can also select a custom folder for your Unity projects. Created project will have its own subfolder inside of this one. In this case, I have a Unity Proj folder that I put in my documents. Uh, once I create this project, it's going to make a Mero SDK folder within that one. So that's just a good way to keep things organized, especially if you have multiple projects. Now we can press Create Project. And this may take some time. Now that the project is created, we can add the Mero SDK to it. Let's start by opening the Package Manager window. This is where you can download and install assets that you own off of the Unity Asset Store, import Unity package files to your project, and install assets from a URL. In this case, we want to install the Mero SDK from the internet with the ability to update when available. Uh, so for that, we're going to need to open Advanced Settings and add a scoped registry. I'll put the links in the description so that you can copy paste them to avoid any typos. Uh, what we'll put here is SLZ as the name. Our URL is going to go to https registry.stresslevel0.com. And then our three scopes here are going to be com.stresslevel0, com.unity.render pipelines, and com.unity.shadergraph. Now we can press save and return to the package manager window. And from here we can use the packages dropdown to view the registry we just added. We'll first install the Mero SDK by selecting it in the list and clicking the install button on the bottom right. Once the installation is complete, you should see this getting started window as well as a new stress level zero menu at the top of your screen. You can use this menu to access various Mero SDK tools as well as reopen the getting started window. If you're feeling a little lost at this point, don't worry. Uh, we'll go over the Unity layout, as well as Unity and Mero SDK terminology in the first modding workshop. 
For now, it's just important that everything is installed correctly so that you can follow along. While we're here, let's ensure that the SDK was able to find your BoneLab installation. This will allow you to add BoneLab content such as items, characters, and music into your mods. The SDK will try to locate this automatically, displaying the path next to step one in this getting started window. If this path is missing or seems incorrect, you can click on the folder icon to open the game installation locator. At the top of the locator window, you'll find a list of installation locations that the SDK has predicted. You can either select one of these items and press confirm, or expand the dropdown below for more options. Within the dropdown, you can either search your entire PC for BoneLab, which may take some time, or browse for the location yourself. If you own the game on Steam, the location can be found by right-clicking the game in your library, selecting Manage, and then Browse Local Files. If you own the game on Oculus, you can find the install directory by going to your General Settings within the app and choosing to Edit Library Locations. Within the location displayed there, you can find a Software folder, and then a folder for Stress Level 0 Incorporated, Phone Lab. When browsing, you can either select the entire game folder, or the Windows 64 underscore data folder within, and then confirm your selection. To make sure our installation was correctly located, we can open the Asset Warehouse. This is where you can manage your individual mods, also known as palettes, as well as content from BoneLab itself. You can access the Asset Warehouse at any time, either through this Getting Started window, or through the button in the top left of your Unity program. Now, for some reason, I wasn't able to see the BoneLab content until I created a palette of my own, but let's create a temporary one in the meantime. To create a palette, click on the icon with the plus symbol, give it a name and author name, and click Create. Then click on the Refresh button at the top of the window. If you located your installation correctly, you should be able to explore the external palettes, such as BoneLab content. One last SDK tool to install is the Marrow Backlot a collection of modular assets such as walls, stairs, and grid textures for quickly designing level layouts in a familiar bone lab style. To install the backlot, you'll have to return to the package manager, select My Registries from the dropdown, click on Marrow Backlot in the list, and click Install. This will add a new highlighted folder in the packages directory that contains the backlot assets for you to use. Once again, we'll go further in depth in our first live modding workshop. Now that you've installed the required Unity and Marrow SDK software, I have a few additional programs that I'd like to recommend. They're all completely free, and will be used in future modding workshops to create original content from scratch, as well as modify models, textures, and sounds for use in our mods. The first is Blender, a free but extremely powerful 3D modeling program that we can use to create models from scratch, convert file formats, create usable avatars, draw textures directly onto models, and so much more. You can download it from blender.org. I'd also like to recommend GIMP. It's basically Photoshop, but again, completely free. We can use GIMP to draw our own textures, make them tile seamlessly, combine textures such as metallic and smoothness maps into single images, and much, much more. You can download it from GIMP.org. And finally, I'd like to recommend Audacity, an audio recording and editing program that allows you to professionally clean up audio, convert it into file formats used by Unity, and apply filters to get that exact sound that you're looking for. You can download it from audacityteam.org. Once again, you don't exactly need these programs to create mods, but if you want to be able to use any model, texture, or sound that you find online, these are all very helpful. Plus, you can eventually learn how to create your own completely original content from scratch. And with that being said, you're all set for the next Bone Lab modding workshop. Live workshops will be starting soon, I just need to wait for my next work schedule so that I can pick a date. We'll start by covering the absolute basics in regards to Unity and creating a playable, personalized level. I hope to see you there. Later.